welcome to unit one, lesson five. This is part two, the second video. We only have a couple more problems to finish up these notes. Uh, and remember, we are working on using our calculator. Uh, more specifically, we're going to be doing things like stat, edit, entering in our two lists, our X and Y values. Uh, if you're a little bit unsure about that, you can go back and watch part one of unit one, lesson five. Let's get started. Again, I'm just going to go through and do all these problems. So if you want to try them first on your own, just pause the video, do your work, then hit play, and I am about to start this. Here we go. Example five, running. The table shows how wind affects a runner's performance in the 200 meter dash. Positive wind speeds correspond to tailwinds. Negative wind speeds correspond to headwinds. The change T in finishing time is the difference between the runner's time when the wind speed is S and the runner's time when there is no wind. That seems like a lot. Don't worry. Let's hear what they want us to do and just do it. Okay? That was really just a description of the table you see below here. All right? Now, the runner's finishing time is my dependent variable. Why? All right? My independent variable, something I cannot change, is wind speed. All right? But my finishing time is affected by whatever my wind speed is, which is my dependent variable, my input. So, Whatever my wind speed is doing, that's going to affect my finishing time. Wind speed is my input, my output is my finishing time. And that's important because when we put our data in, my X's go into L1, my first list, and my Y's go into L2. So A is asking us, or telling us, use a graphing calculator to find the best fitting quadratic model, round four decimal places. Whenever, whenever you see this best fitting quadratic model, it is asking you for a quadratic equation. Okay, it is asking you for a quadratic equation, and in our case, a quadratic regression. Okay, so you're going to have to use your calculator to give you a line of best fit, which is what regressions do. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Every calculator here, I go to stat. All right, let me use the mouse here so you can see where I'm. I go to stat, and then edit is already set. And I just enter in my x values for L1. Okay, I have negative 6, uh, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, and 6. All right, now I've got to enter in the corresponding y values for each of those axes. 2.28, enter. Uh, 1.42, 0.67, 0.68, 0, okay, and 0 goes with 0. Every once in a while I look up to make sure I didn't miss one. 0 should go with 0, and it still does. The easiest mistake to make is when you press a number or you think you press a number and it's not there, you're missing a value or a decimal or whatever. Okay, so then we go to negative 0.57, uh, negative 1 point, yeah, that's not a 1. See what I'm saying? 1.05 and negative 1.42. All right, it looks like I have everything. In order to calculate this, all right, I want to go to stat, the same stat button I pressed before, and I want to calculate. I want to move over, so I hit the right button, and I want a quadratic. It's telling me right in the problem, so I'm going to pick quadratic regression, number five. I can press number five, or I can scroll down to five. And I go down here. I do this because I like to. I want to put Y1 here. Whatever this calculates, I wanted to put that right into Y1 on my graphing calculator, so I don't have to retype it myself. So I have var, vars, I want to move over to Y vars, 
and I hit enter twice, bang, and there's y1, bang, two times. And now I calculate this bad boy. There you go. So I really want to stress the four decimal places here because that's what it's telling me. All right? So let's take a look at our equation. Y equals A, which is this first number here. Four decimal places. One, two, three, four. So it's point zero one one nine. It will not round up because there's a zero after the nine x squared. Then I have my b value. Okay, it happens to be negative. So it's minus four places. One, two, three, four. That five will round up to a six because the number after the five is seven. Okay, so negative point three zero eight six x plus c. My c is a negative value, so it's minus. And this is a great problem. Because I want to point something out to you right now. All right? If we take a look at our c value, notice what we have at the end here. e to the negative 4. Or to the negative 4. What does that mean? That's really the calculator's way of using scientific notation. So really what I have is negative 4.76 times 10 to the negative 4 which means my decimal has got to slide left four spots, okay? One, two, three, four. And every loop gets a zero in front of it. All right? That's really the same thing as this. All right? So anytime you see that E, with a negative 4, or e with a negative 7, or whatever, that's scientific notation. All right? So it's point, and I gotta go all four places, right? I gotta go 1, 2, 3, 4. This 4 will round up to a 5, because the number after it is 5 or bigger. So it's point zero, 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 5. This is your equation to four decimal places, and I am so glad that they did this here because that will happen once in a great while and it throws students off. So that is really a good equation. There's our best fitting quadratic model for A. Now what is B asking me to do? All right, B, if I scroll down here, is saying predict the change in finishing time when the wind speed is 10 that meters per second. All right, so what I'm gonna do, let me get rid of all this right here so we can see our table again. Cut, take this, cut that out, go, let's just delete it, even better. All right, so when our wind speed is 10, all right, this is our wind speed. So when our wind speed is 10, what's our finishing time? This is my input, so all I need to do is set my x equal to 10, and I can solve this. Now, it doesn't say that you need to use the equation you came up with, which is good for me, because Mr. Visca told the calculator to put my equation into y1. It is all typed there. What's the big deal? Now I can look at my table. All right, they want to know what happens when x is 10. So I'm going to scroll down here. Look, keep on going. We're 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There you go. And if I look over here, you see how the 10 is highlighted? If I want to see more decimal places than just 3 on the y, I just move this box over here. There you go. So I'm going to do this. Put this here. All right, let me get a little bigger so you can see it better. When the wind speed is 10, the finishing time will be negative 1.895, and I can keep on writing here, 
seven, one, four, that, that, that. They went up to the nearest hundred. That is two decimal places. This nine will round up because the number after it is five or bigger. So it's negative 1.90. My label, seconds. There you go. Now, if you would have used your equation here, you would have used this, you would have come up with something very similar. And it might have been off slightly. How come? Because your equation was rounded. You had probably eight or nine more decimals after the nine, and eight or nine more decimals after the six, eight or nine more decimals after the five that I use right here. Your equation would not have used them. So it might have been slightly different. And that's fine. But this question didn't tell us to use that equation or the original equation. It didn't tell us which one to use. So either answer in my book would have been fine. Okay? Example six. You want to try it on your own? Hit pause. If not, here we go. Example six states, the table below shows the horizontal distance in feet traveled by a baseball hit at various angles. The initial speed of the ball off the bat is constant. So A, they're asking us to determine a quadratic regression model equation to represent the data that they give us in this table. And they want it to the nearest hundred. Quadratic regression right here to tell you in your mind stat time. And for that information. Stat calculate your quadratic regression, and so forth. Now, I'm going to scroll down here. You have part B, it looks like you've got to plot some things. Then we have part C, it says equation, it's a good fix. Huh. Since I see that right now, I know, and I mentioned this in part one of this lesson, we need the coefficient of determination, which is R squared. We are going to have to turn on our stats diagnostics. That sounds like a complicated thing, but really it isn't. So before I start typing in any of this stuff, and I could do it later if I forget, and then just you know recalculate my regression, that's fine. It's not like you don't do it in the beginning and get it wrong. You can still go back and do it. But this will save you an extra minute or two. In my calculator, by default, okay, when you get your calculator, I'm going to clear, uh, clear this. It's seconds plus 712. This is how your calculator is going to be when you have a test or whatever. Clear. By default, if I hit mode, and I go over this in lesson one, and I scroll down to where it says stats, Diagnostics, right here. It is off by default. If you want to see this number, you need to turn this on. Hit enter, and that's it. It's that simple. So now I just quit. I hit second in mode, because above mode is quit. And I do everything I normally would. The only difference is when they give me my equation with the A and the B and the C, below the C, we will now have this value which we're going to need. So let's go back up here and find our quadratic regression for this information here. Wow, that's a lot of numbers. You know what? Who cares? It's going to take you an extra minute and a half to type it in. The calculator is still going to do all the work for you. All right? So let's be very careful when we type this in. Fat edit. These are my x values, these are my y values. Depending on the angle I hit, my y, the distance in feet, depends on the angle the ball comes off the bat. And most times, and you'll notice here, the x comes before the y. The x is my angle because that's what's at first, if I'm reading this left to right. Even in the previous problem, if I'm going top down, my x was first, my y was second. 
If you're ever uncertain, I would go with that, those rules. That'll probably be right. Okay? So let's enter in all this uh, data. Ooh, it is 10. All right. 15, 20, 24, 30, 34. I'm going to look up and yeah, everything's still good. Uh, 40, 45, 48, 50, 58, uh, 60, and 64. All right, there you go. And it tells you. Uh, I would like to show you one more, uh, more thing. If you think you might have forgot something, see this number right here? That tells you that there are 13 values here. So let's count and make sure we have 13 values here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Perfect. I have 13 here, and list 1 is made up of 13 numbers. Good. Now we got to put in our feet. All right. 115.6, 157.6, 157.6, 157.6. That's all that. The top one. See, I looked up. 115.6. I looked up just to double check, and I thought that. That's the easiest mistake to make. All right? So now we're on the number that's across from 24, which is 2, 20, 48. Yeah, again, the zero. Now we're at 253.8. All right. 269.2. All right. 284.8. 285, right on the button. That's nice. 277.4. 269.2. All right. 244.2. Okay, everything still looks pretty good. No, right there, 240. Whenever I can hit the same number back to back, this sometimes doesn't register it on the board, which is fine as long as I'm always checking. 231.4, and last but not least, 180.4. There you go. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Let's look up here. So I'm just going to scroll up to make sure all these numbers like have three digits, and they do. And some decimals. Okay, they all look good. All right. Now I need my quadratic regression. Stats. Calculate. I need a quadratic, number five. Now I am going to put this into Y1. Vars, Y variables. Enter, enter. When I calculate this, not only should I see my equation, but below my A, B, and C, I should see R squared. And there it is. That is nice for us. Okay. So I'm going to bring this over here so that we have it. And I'm going to write my equation to the nearest hundred. Again, the nearest hundred is two decimal places. Two decimal places. So let's go further. Y equals my A value, which is negative 0.17x squared. My B value which is positive, so I'm going to say plus. That's 14.52x plus my C value. That's, ooh, it's a negative. Now, I could say plus a negative, but I'd like to make it nice and keep it purple. Minus 21 points. Ooh, that will round up from 8.9 to 9.0. There you go. There's your equation. Now, they want us to plot. Okay, they want us to plot all these points here. All right, they want us to plot all these points. Here are my x's, here are my y's on this graph below. Now, we got to be careful here. Here's my x, which is my angle. Okay, here's my y, which is my height or distance in feet. Now, I gotta take a look at my axes. This goes up to 64. 
So if I start at zero, I want to make sure I hit at least 64. And if I did this right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up by fives. All right. So instead of every line being one, every line is five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and so forth. Now we're at 40, 45, 50. Sorry about my writing. 55, 60, 65. Perfect. Because I go as high as 64. Perfect. That covers everything. All right? Now my Y. The biggest number I have here looks to be 285. I want to make sure I go from zero and at least up to 285. So I am going to count by 25s. So I've got 25, 50. 75, 100, 125, 150, 175, 200, good, 225, 250, 275, 300, perfect, I can go to 325, that is perfect, all right, now my Y, that's in feet, right, my X, is in degrees. They're angles in degrees, right? So this means angle in degrees. All I'm going to do is plot each one of these points. That's it. This first one is 10, and then I go to 115.6. That's a little bit above 100, so right there. My next one, 15, 157, so it's slightly above 150. Okay, I'm just going to go through and do these. 20, and then just about 190. So 20 and 190 is just short of 200 on the Y. 24 to 20, so I go to 24, which is just in front of this 25 line, and I go to 220, which is just short of 225. 30. 253. So 30 is going to be right around 250. Uh, 34 is going to be at 270, let's call it. Just about 270. All right. 40 is at 284.8. So we go to 40, we go to 284.8. That's just above here. Um, 45, that's pretty much the same height. So we go to 45, that's pretty much the same height. Uh, this is slightly lower at 48, so slightly lower, that's 277, that's maybe right here, okay, because that's 48, that's between 45 and 50 on the x-axis. 50 is at 269, which is probably right around here, 58 is at 245, 245, wow, which is probably right around here. That's 58, so that's just in front of the line 60. 60 is that 231, which would be 231. Oh my goodness. 44, 231. Is that right? Did I do that right? 58, 240, yeah, that's kind of right. That 64 is that 180, which would probably be somewhere around here. Okay, so it's kind of going to look like this. All right? That looks weird when those two dots are close together, but hey, you know what? That's fine. 58 is at 244, and 60 is at 231. They're going to be close. There you go. That's what you do. Now, it's our hope that our regression kind of fits here. It's our hope that when we plot our parabola, it's probably going to do something like that. It might not touch every dot, but we want to touch we're going to touch uh, most of them and be a really good fit. So what they ask us here for the next one is our equation a new fit? I'm going to bring this back down here. Is our equation a new fit? I need to look at r squared. r squared is 0.981, or I can say that's 98.1%. Okay, I want to change it to percent. 
Yes, it's a good fit. So yes, it's a good fit. How come? Anything better than 95%. So if it's 95% or more, okay, if 95% is included, that's a good fit, statistically. So that's the funny thing, but all you gotta know here, 95% or better, good fit. All right? So, based upon the new equation, what distance to the nearest foot will correspond to an angle of five degrees? So, they wanna know, if my angle is five degrees, my x, what's that distance? All I've gotta do is substitute a five in for x. Now, what I will do is I will use our equation, y equals negative point one seven. This was x squared, right? Now it's five squared because they want that angle five plus fourteen point five two times x, which would be five minus twenty one point I believe that was nine zero when we round. I'm going to put that in the calculator, and let's see what we get. Turn this bad boy on, which would be nice. Second quit, and I've got negative 0.17 times 5 squared, plus 14.52 times 5, minus 21.90, and I hit enter. My answer is 46. 0.45. Okay, that's 46.45 feet. But they want that to the nearest foot. That would be 46 feet. Now, some of you might be asking, why do we just use a table? This sets me based on a new equation. So that tells me based on what I just came up with. So they're telling me to use my rounded version. Of the equation. Now, if you want to check the table to make sure that your calculation is somewhere where it needs to be, because remember, it might be slightly off. There you go. I look at my table and I want to look where it's five. It is slightly different, but if I round it, that would still round the 46. So you're good. That's right where you want to be. Now, I want to show you something cool. If you don't know how to do a plot graph, we're going to check to see if this is similar to what the calculator gives us. Okay? I'm going to go, and if I go to y equals, I have my equation there already. The calculator put that in. All right? I'm going to change my window so that it resembles what I have here for x and y. So my x minimum is going to be zero. And my x max is going to be the 65. I'm going to go from 0 to 65. And I'm going to go by 5s because isn't that how I counted here? I'm going to go by 5s. My y's are going to go from 0 to 325. 0 to 325. And my scale goes up by 25. So I'm going to tell my scale to be 25. I go back to y equals. Now, this will graph the line, but I want to see the points before the line. If I wanted to see just the points only, I could delete this, but I want to keep that there. I go up to plot, and I just hit enter. And you see how it's got that highlighted box around it? Now, when I graph it, there are the points. Look at that. And see, there are two that are up by themselves. And that line goes through almost all of them. So that is a line of great fit. I love that. That's fantastic. All right? Again, these circles here are the little square holes that they put right here. That is perfect. All right? The reason I didn't want to delete this, okay, is because we're going to use this line to solve our next problem, our next, our last actual issue. So I'm going to go back to y equal. I'm going to get rid of my plots and hit enter. Now it's not highlighted. Now if I graph it, it does it without the points. So that's how you toggle or turn the points on and off. Where did they get those points? They got those points from here. They plotted all these points from us on our lists, okay? So 
Let's take a look at this last problem here. What angle to the nearest degree will correspond to a distance of 270 feet? The angle is my x value, remember? So they're giving us a y value, all right? So if my y equals negative 0.17x squared plus 14.52x, minus 21.90, my y is 270 feet. Now, how do I solve something where I have two equations? And what do I mean by two equations? I have one equation on this side, and this is actually another one here. I put this in y1, I put this in y2, and wherever they intersect, that's the answer. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So, what I'll do is because I use my rounded equation for d, I'm going to use the rounded equation for this one as well. You don't have to, but I'm going to. And the answers will be very, very similar. So, let's just do this. We have this type A. Let's put in what well, we're using, negative 0.17x squared plus 14.52x minus 21.90. That's in y1. y2, I'm literally just typing in 270. When I look at the graph, there's the first equation I typed in. There's 270. It crosses at two points. The calculator is going to tell us those two points. Just like we tell the calculator to come up with a quadratic regression, and just like part one of this lesson five video, how we did the maximum point with the bow tie, we can tell the calculator to find the intersection. I hit second trace because I want the calc menu. Five says intersect. Look how nice that is. I'm going to go down to five. Hit enter, and wherever my little buggy's closest to, it is closest to this intersection point. I'm literally going to hit enter three times. One, two, three. There's my first one. We'll look at that in a moment. I got to do the same thing for the second one. Second, trace, because it's my calc menu for calculate. Number five, intersect. Now I need to bring my little bug dude all the way over, straight line is this way there. Bam, I'm closer to this intersection point. I hit enter three times. One, two, three. There's my second one. So what's this telling me? It's literally giving me the answers, okay? When Y is 270, my X value will be 32.374. That's one of my answers. The second answer is when y is 270, my x value is 53.03. .03. It literally puts the answer in front of me. So I can say that my, well, let me extend this so we got the room here. I can say that my x is approximately a 32.375, let's call it, and 50. 3.037. I'm getting those from here and from here. All right. But do you remember what it asked us to round to? To the nearest degree. So if I keep these to the nearest degree or whole numbers, that's 32 degrees and that's 53 degrees. Those will give you y values were outputs of 270 feet. Wow! Even though there was two problems, those were very detailed problems. Those actually resembled short answer problems on the final. All right, more specifically this one where there was, you know, A, B, D, and E, that's almost like the final six-point question where there are four or five parts to it. So this is good work, good stuff here, people. Good job. See ya.